Hey y'all, welcome back to Sweeten Your Day. I'm Katie Richard with the American Sugar Cane League. And I'm Renee Nockan with the LSU Ag Center. And today we're in Iberville Parish, home of the Sugar Research Station, digging into the science behind the sugar that you see growing across Louisiana. The sweet beginning of sugar cane isn't a seed. It's a grassy plant that starts with a stalk. And before that stalk ever hits the field, it is tested in research stations and greenhouses. Thanks to the partnership between the American Sugarcane League, the LSU Ag Center, and the USDA, we have world-class research being done right here in the Louisiana Cane Belt. Sugarcane breeding is a long, careful process. Breeders combine the best traits from different varieties to create stronger, sweeter, more resilient cane that can stand up to disease, weather, weeds, and pests. From the first cross to field release, it takes about 13 years, and only a handful of varieties make the cut. Choosing the right variety is like picking the best athlete in the big game, and the science makes all the difference. It's science you can actually see growing in the field, and today we're excited to introduce you to Braden Blanchard, one of the young researchers working to shape the future of sugarcane. So I grew up on a sugarcane farm, uh, I would be the fifth generation involved in sugarcane. Um, I grew up in St. Martinville, Louisiana. It was a great way to grow up. I, I worked on the farm all throughout my high school days. I learned a ton from my dad and my uncle who co-own and run the farm together. Finished my degree in crop science and I felt like as far as plant breeding goes, that was kind of my way to make an impact on the industry. I was very fascinated by plant breeding in general, but certainly in sugarcane breeding. So I immediately started working here full-time as a research associate. My official title is sugarcane breeder and quantitative geneticist. And um, that's important because a lot of my responsibilities have to do with conducting the breeding program, specifically for the crossing and early stage evaluations. For us, yes, we have to first make those new varieties. We do that with crossing. But then over the next 12 year selection cycle, we have to properly identify those, what we call elite varieties. We have to make sure that these varieties perform well, not just here in their evaluation stages, but in multiple environments. And by environments, I mean all of the different areas of our industry, but also in multiple years, uh, multiple different management practices. And so we have to see these varieties perform in those different environments if we're going to promote them for release. We start every year with around 80,000 new varieties, and over the 12-year process, we're gonna whittle that down to hopefully one that might be good enough for the industry. So yes, that, that relies on our ability to most probably align those good genes into the new variety, and then most probably identifying them. And I think those new technologies have come a long way in improving that probability for our selection decisions. To me, the most exciting part is that we still have new ideas, we're trying these ideas, and that's often the biggest hurdle, is sometimes you just gotta, you plant the trial, you put it out there, you see if it works, and hopefully some of these ideas will lead to, again, multiple generations of success well into the future. Disease pressures, insect pressures, that's always gonna be a priority for the breeding program. We hope to mitigate a lot of that before it's in the grower's hands, um, but even further than that, like anything, anything they might have to face, you know, on farm, we're, we're hoping to address that in an improved variety. All we can ask is that, is that the growers try it and see how it does in their system. We can't test every single environment in the state. We try to represent that as well as we can. So we're still so very curious to see how it does on each individual farm. And that feedback to me is so very important. Even if it's like, I tried this variety, it doesn't work for me, that's still good feedback for me because at least you tried it. At least we know now it doesn't work in that kind of system. Sometimes that's the, the, the very best kind of information that we can get. I love seeing young talent like Braden making a difference for Louisiana sugarcane farmers. And it's a great reminder, every field of cane you pass has years of science, hard work, and dedication behind its sweet beginning. Until next time, that's the scoop on sugar.